Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. My first stop into Colorado. This is Keystone. Very windy up there right now on top of the Continental Divide. Uh, it's obviously dry, but we're looking at 50 and 60 mile an hour wind gusts here. It's been the case pretty much all day long. That'll be the case tonight, and then the winds will slowly relax. But new snow is on the way uh, starting tomorrow, late tonight into tomorrow for the Continental Divide, especially the western slope of Colorado. I think that's where we're probably going to see some of the biggest totals across like I-70 west towards Aspen and Snowmass and Vail, all those places. But that wind in Colorado, man, it is a nasty day up there. All right, let me show you what it looks like in Alta. So you have the appetizer snow, the first wave. Now we're in the lull right now. The second much bigger wave of snow comes in very late tonight and throughout the day tomorrow on Friday. You'll probably pick up a foot. So whatever snow you've already got is bonus. We're going to add a foot of snow to that and including Snowbird. Here's Jackson Hole. Kind of a similar setup. You had about three, four, or five inches of snow. Uh, that's all bonus. We're going to add more snow to that um, late tonight and throughout the day tomorrow with the second wave of uh, snow that comes in the main push, uh, we'll call it. Let me show you my bullet points here so you can see where we're headed with this. So we've got the lull, the timing there in Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming with snow coming in late tonight, overnight, throughout the day tomorrow for all three places, Utah, Colorado, Wyoming. And we're also going to touch on the East Coast Storm System. I'll give you an update on that, which runs 1210 and 1211. That's going to be a very windy storm system with a lot of jet stream support. Let me take you back and show you what this all looks like here on the water vapor satellite imagery. So on this, the moisture aloft is going to be in your whites and your blues. So one big low right now. That's the one that's coming out of the Pacific Northwest and moving down um, through Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Utah, and Colorado. Another big low behind it, although it's not, by the time it gets into the Pacific Northwest and tries to move, it's, it's going to be much weaker and much faster um, in the flow. So it's really this first low that, that means business. Here's the forecast radar and satellite. So that's the current state of affairs. By the time we get into the overnight and the tomorrow morning, there's your clear second wave coming in. In fact, I'll rewind. So you can see that's the current state of affairs. And here comes the second wave by tomorrow morning into the Tetons, into Idaho, into the Wasatch. And that's the one that's really going to produce the bigger totals. And then that pushes snow into the, uh, the central and northern mountains of Colorado and the San Juans for that matter. But a lot of that tilts west across the western slope of Colorado. And it's still there by 4 p.m., although the snow in Colorado has expanded now. Uh, we're looking at the possibility of snow all the way down here into Denver during the midday into the afternoon, especially afternoon evening hours in the Denver area. So it'll be cold enough for all this. Colder air will be moving in. It'll be a, a very cold weekend. And uh, I was just looking at some of the numbers in Colorado's mountains. We're absolutely going to fall below zero um, over the weekend in the mountains of Colorado. All right, here we go by uh, Saturday morning. Still some leftover snow in Colorado as the low kind of moves through southern Colorado, northern New Mexico, and then it sweeps out during the afternoon. Looking back, here comes that second storm, but again, it's fast and it's weak, but it will move a few inches of snow through Idaho, Montana, and probably Wyoming, uh, maybe even a little bit into the uh, central and northern mountains of Colorado, uh, 1210, 1211. Uh, and then the arc of precip stays up there in the northern tier, and that's probably going to do it for a little while um, as far as uh, snowfall goes. We'll probably have to wait until 12, 14, 12, 15, 12, 16 um, for the possibility of another storm system. All right, let me show you what the jet pattern looks like here. So this is 12.8. That's that, that larger load that comes through. You can see the dip in the jet, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado. So a lot of jet support there. We'll crank out some, some decent totals, moderate to heavy. Looking way down the road, so this is 12, 15, 12, 16, and you can see there is a little bit of a dip in the jet there coming through um, the Intermountain West. We'll see what that delivers. It's a long way out, uh, but a possibility. As far as totals, so the rest of today through the 9th, we'll add a foot. Again, that's late overnight tonight throughout the day tomorrow for big or for Little Cottonwood Canyon. Probably 8 to 10 for Big Cottonwood in less Park City, Deer Valley. Looking for 8 to 10 up there in the Tetons. In Colorado, again, the bigger totals are going to be across the western slope where we could see 6 to 12 inches. Probably 4 to 8, Winter Park, Loveland, A Basin, Keystone. Um, looks like a big sky will add 6. You... You picked up seven last night into this morning, so 
that'll be great to see. Um, another foot up there in the Pacific Northwest and some decent snow through interior BC. Uh, here's the second period, 1210 through 1216. So you have that minor second low that comes through, and then the potential for another one around 1516. And this is what I'm forecasting. Pretty light accumulations, um, generally one to five inches for most places. Um, okay, let's talk about the Northeast. So this is the jet pattern. It's a big, big low pressure. It's got a lot of wind, a lot of jet support. This is late 1210. Uh, you can see the low developing and starting to... Uh, starting to tilt a little bit. But with this setup, it puts all the ski areas in the northeast uh, into the warm sector. So I'm expecting a lot of rain initially on 1210, and then it will change over to snow on 1211 at a lot of ski areas. Here's the actual forecast radar on late 1210, 845, 9 o'clock. Again, it, it's all rain through Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine, and it is in a lot of places initially, and then you're colder on the western side of the storm with the cold front sweeping, and that'll change over the rain um, to snow um, behind it. So as far as accumulation goes, this is what I'm expecting. Uh, again, 12, 10, 12, 11 with the storm system, that's when the bulk of this is going to fall. And it changes over to snow at 1211, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine. And you're really better off in northern Vermont, northern New Hampshire, northern Maine, or even uh, New York State, where we could see 5 to maybe 8, 9, 10 inches of snow in a couple of areas on that colder side of the storm. One last stop here today. I'm sure, I, I think you'll appreciate this. An update on El Nino. So we're in a strong El Nino right now. Strong for sure. Uh, but look what happens. We take a pretty sharp right-hand turn after about January, February. Um, the water starts to cool in that El Nino region, which is 3.4 in this forecast. And we start to head towards neutral and eventually a La Nina by the time we get into spring and summer. That's the latest forecast um, guidance uh, that I'm seeing. And so what that does, it puts us into a transition around February, March, April. So that late part of winter, we're going to see a transition take place. A little bit of an El Nino Modokai might develop, um, which would have some effect on the Western pattern. I really want to see how we're doing by the time we get into January and February, because then we'll be able to see what the transition and what the rotation might be in the pattern. But just a heads up on that, uh, that could be... Uh, that could be something that happens down the road. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in here, and take care.